Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Finch. I teach biology and biotechnology, and I'm here to tell you that biology and biotechnology are amazing fields, and they sound really scary and really hard, but they are not. We're going to break it down into small pieces, and we're going to do lots of fun experiments so that you can learn about the important things in biology. Um, today we're going to be working on extracting DNA from strawberries. Now you can also do this with any other mushy fruit like kiwi or bananas. You can try it with hard things, but you're going to get a lot more DNA from mushy things. Strawberries seem to be the best. For some reason, they have amazing DNA. So we're going to get the DNA out of here and we're going to look at what it looks like. And the cool thing is that your DNA looks exactly like the strawberry DNA. When we look at it, it's going to be really stringy and long at the end, which is super cool. Again, the only difference is that what makes this a strawberry and me a human is the order of those letters, those nucleotides. Remember the A's, the T's, the C's, and the G's. Put them together in different ways and that's how you get something that looks very different. So we're going to extract the DNA out of here. So what we need, some simple things that you're going to have to have. So you need to have your fruit. So all you need is about two or three strawberries. We're going to have some buffer. So this is extraction buffer. This sounds like super fancy, but it's not. All this is is water and some shampoo. And if you're going to do this at home, it's really good to have clear shampoo. Because if you have colored shampoo, it's going to affect the color of the DNA at the end. So something clear would be good. Cheap is great too. And then salt is the only other thing in here. And I'd be glad to give you this recipe um, if you want. It's very, very simple to make. So that's the extraction buffer. And then we have isopropyl alcohol. You can buy this at the grocery store that's in those um, brown containers. It's best if this is cold and your extraction buffer needs to be cold as well. You'll get more DNA at the end. Um, we're going to have a little test tube. You don't need to have this, but this is fun because then you can keep the DNA um, for later. You need a little, a little cup, a clear cup, um, a rubber band and a paper towel, doesn't need to be fancy like this one, and a Ziploc bag. And that's it, that's all you need for this process. Okay, so the very first step is to take the sepals off. Sepals, all that is is the green part. So you don't want the green part, so just take that off. And you can put that in the compost pile if you want. That would be good. You can use that for mulch later, or just throw it in the trash, that's fine too. You're gonna put this in your Ziploc bag. And again, two or three strawberries, you don't need to have any more than that. And then you're going to smash them. And this is the fun part. So you get to take some aggression out on your strawberries. So smash, smash, smash. Be careful not to break the bag because you're going to get strawberry juice on yourself. If you break the bag, just transfer it to a new bag, no problem. But smush, smush, smush. And the more you smush, the better because you're going to get more DNA out of here. So lots of fun. It's going to start smelling like a smoothie shop too pretty soon. <laughs> which is always tasty. I think that looks pretty good. Feel free to smush as long as you like. It is a good stress reliever. Okay, so now we're ready to add our extraction buffer. So remember I said an extra extraction buffer is water, shampoo, and salt. The shampoo is the, the important thing for this first step. We need to be able to bust open those cells. Remember cells have a plasma membrane around the outside, just like our cells, so all cells have it. And that's protective. It keeps the cell um, together. It keeps the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. We also need to bust open the nuclear membrane too because we want to let the DNA out. So those are two membranes that we got to bust open. And the way we do that is with our shampoo. So we're going to take 10 milliliters. And if you're at home, you don't need like to really measure this out. You can just pour a little bit into your bag. It doesn't need to be perfect. Pour that in here. And we get to smash again. Yay! So remember again, what we're doing right now is we're trying to bust open the plasma membrane and that nuclear membrane because we got to get the DNA out of there. So we're going to, but you got to be careful this time. So you don't want to smash too aggressively, but you can smash it around. It's going to be a little bubbly, but you don't want it to be too bubbly. So we try to be gentle this time with our smashing. So right now, we're busting open those plasma membranes and the nuclear membrane is getting busted open too. And that's all due to that shampoo. That detergent gets in there and opens it up. So smashing gently this time. So I think that looks pretty good. And now we get to open this up and smell the yummy strawberry smell. And we're going to create a little funnel here. You could actually use a funnel for this too. The idea is we want to collect the liquid at the bottom and we want to get all of the proteins and all the rest of the strawberry parts that we don't want to stay on the top there. So it smells good. It's like shampoo smoothies. Yum yum. Do not drink this. 
So we're going to pour this in here. Now again, the DNA is all in the liquid, so we want to filter that liquid through our paper towel. So this is going to need to sit for two to three minutes, um, and again, what's happening is that the liquids on top here, that's got the DNA in it, it's going to filter down to the bottom. So if we pick this up, you can probably see yep, that it's already starting to come out. So we're going to let that sit. <clears throat> you don't need to smash it or anything, it's just going to drip out. So we're going to let it sit for two to three minutes and I'll show you how much you should have at the end there. This has been sitting for two to three minutes now. Again, the amount that you're looking for is something like that. So you don't need a ton of the juice, but remember what's in here that's important is the DNA. So everything else, all the proteins and all the other cellulose and things that are present in your strawberry are going to stay up on top. So this next part is really important. It's important that you make sure that you get all of this stuff into the garbage. Remember, we're not eating this because we don't want it to fall into our DNA. So you want to carefully remove your rubber band if you can. So we're left with the good stuff. So that's our essentially um, liquefied DNA. Now what we need to do is we need to make it visible to our eyes. So it's here, right, but we can't see that that's DNA. So we need to precipitate it. That's the fancy word for make it move from a liquid to a solid. So again, I told you in our extraction buffer that we had shampoo and water and salt. So two things that you need for the extraction are the salt that's present in here. So the salt is still here. And then you need to add your isopropyl alcohol. So the combination of the salt and the isopropyl alcohol, which should be cold, um, ice cold if possible, will help to precipitate and bring the DNA from a liquid to a solid that we can then see. Okay? So what you need to do is hold your cup at an angle and you're going to slowly squeeze or pour your isopropyl alcohol. And there's no precise amount for this, so you're just going to watch and look at what's happening. And you can actually see the white strings of the DNA start to precipitate. And you're just going to keep pouring or squirting that isopropyl alcohol in. Got the white stringy DNA in here, again we precipitated it using the isopropyl alcohol and the salt. So that's the beautiful DNA that we have and we have again a lot of this. This white stringy stuff, let me see if I can pull it out for you, is exactly how your DNA would look as well. So we could take your cells, a good number of your cells, it would take quite a few cells, and we could extract the DNA and we could precipitate it just like this. And that's what your DNA would look like too. Yours would be a little less pink probably because you're not a strawberry. But this is what it would look like. So that's your DNA. So again, think about, this is pretty phenomenal that that's the DNA. That's what controls and makes everything alive. Um, and again, everything is going to be different because of those nucleotides that we talked about. So we've got our stringy DNA. So you can save this. Remember, we're not going to eat this but you can save it. You don't, if you don't have a little tube, you could put it in another Ziploc bag, that's fine, or um, some sort of container if you want to keep it. Um, you don't have to keep it, but it's pretty cool to show people. So there's DNA, so you can say, look, this is my strawberry DNA. Um, and again, it's pretty amazing to think about this is what makes everything alive, this is what makes us unique, and that's strawberry DNA specifically. So we want to think about what is the actual structure. So if we think about it's white and stringy, but what's the literal structure of DNA? If we could look at the molecular level, we remember that that structure is a double helix. And that double helix we can then look at in more detail to look at the, the backbone and we can look at the nucleotides and we'll talk about that in our next experiment.